Great. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for that introduction. Uh, my name is Han Tran. I am a senior solutions architect with AWS on our nonprofit team. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about AIML, uh, Power Predictive Data Analytics. So there's going to be a lot to be covered here in the next 17 minutes that I have. So I want to talk about first, like the path to machine learning, what we have to do to prep our data to get there, um, and then leading into the AIML stack, and then what is predictive analytics in general and how you can use that or how you can uh, get to predictive analytics using machine learning. And then lastly, getting started on AWS if uh, that is what you're interested in. So first, um, uh, the first thing that we really have to really look at uh, when you talk about machine learning is I would say data strategy. Data strategy really is the foundation for transformation and innovation through technologies like analytics and machine learning. And so we frequently ask our customers to share what they think it means to have a modern data strategy. And we encounter a wide range of answers, not only from you know, organization to organization, but from person to person in the same organization. So often we hear our customers equate a modern data strategy with a specific technology or tool, such as a data warehouse or you know, the buzzword now is generative AI. But technology is certainly part of the modern data strategy, but it's not at the core. And at AWS, we defined a modern data strategy as an agile plan of aligned actions, spanning mindset, people, process, and technology that accelerates creating value using data in direct support of a strategic business objective. All right, let me see here. All right, so there are three key phases that we look at at the journey to becoming more data-driven. The first step is to modernize data infrastructure to get off an on-premises database, for example, and to like a more modern cloud data infrastructure. The second is liberating that data by moving it to maybe a lakehouse architecture to break down data silos and get more data from accessible to, to everyone who needs it within the organization. And the third is the gold star, right? The, the North Star there. We want to be able to innovate with that data using AI and machine learning. Uh, machine learning or ML is what we will be focusing on today. And lastly, about just using predictive analytics with ML. So I want to define really what each of these acronyms are. And you've probably heard these technologies, uh, I'm sure, right? Um, so AI is really just to describe any system that replicates tasks that previously required human intelligence. And almost always, this is related to some kind of complex decision making where human judgment would be required. So most use cases for AI are looking for a probabilistic outcome, making a prediction or classification or a decision of some high degree or certainty, similar to human judgment. And almost all AI systems today are created using machine learning. So one layer below. Machine learning uses large amounts of data to create and validate decision logic known as a model. So the AI system then feeds input data into that model and that model outputs human-like predictions or classifications. So machine learning is the underlying technology that is powering intelligent systems. And AI can be created without ML, but right now ML is the primary, uh, primary method for creating AI systems. Um, and similarly, ML can be used for more than just AI, but right now, like I said, the majority of ML is AI related. And then one layer below is deep learning, which is a type of machine learning that uses a technique known as deep neural networks. And these systems replicate how the human brain functions. And then lastly, you have generative AI. So now this is really using, you know, a subset of that deep learning that now can create new content powered by something called FMs or foundation models. So I wanna just get that out of the way, define all these terminologies as we move, uh, as we move along our presentation. I want to highlight some use cases. So some customer experience is now being transformed via capabilities such as you know, chatbots, virtual assistants, intelligent contact centers, personalization, or content moderation. Um, you can really boost your employees' productivity, for example, with generative AI, right? So generative AI powered conversational search, content creation, text summarization, code generations, among others. And you can see here in our uh, the second column, augment human uh, ingenuity. That is where kind of forecasting comes into play. And that's where we're, where we're heading towards that predictive analytics using ML. 
So I want to just give this slide here to just give you an overall overview of all the different use cases that some of our customers are uh, experimenting with AI ML. And on that note, if you go into aiexplore.aws.amazon.com, um, and then in here, there are loads of different types of use cases for your specific industry that you can go in and explore. Um, so for example, like I said, I work with nonprofits. So if my nonprofit customers can go on, there's a, a specific um, dropdown for industry. You can go for, for your specific industry and look at some of the use cases um, to get kind of that generation of um, different ideas that could be useful for you and your organization. All right. Now, here I kind of want to talk about really what that data preparation, data collection looks like for when you do look at um, ML, AI ML, right? So in the very left side, you have that data collection. And this data collection part could be from any data coming from Amazon RDS, which is our relational database service, or it could be from on-premises data, some streaming data, or any other types of databases that you have. There will be some sort of connection, right? And essentially, you would drop that into some uh, lake house architecture that I have mentioned previously. So this could be a data lake or some sort of data warehouse. <clears throat> and so if you wanted to drop that raw data into a data lake, that could be something like Amazon S3 or a simple storage service. And then next, you've, you've dropped your raw data, you've connected it, you've dropped your raw data into a landing zone, for, uh, right? Next, you have some sort of data preparation. So this data preparation is maybe some cleansing, maybe you're dropping certain tables, maybe you're cleaning up and normalizing that data. You're, 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 there's some sort of ETL process or extract, transform, and loading process. Um, you're doing some built-in transformations. Lastly, maybe you're putting this now into a clean data warehouse or a clean data lake again, and this is where your data is ready to do that AI ML, to do that next step of maybe forecasting or doing that predictive analytics. But at a high level, this is how you could prepare for data uh, for AML in AWS. And similarly, this, this slide really summarizes that end-to-end -end foundation. And across all these areas, AWS really provides you with the right tool for the right job, so you don't have to compromise on costs, performance, or results. And we have carried this philosophy of no one size fits all for your you know, AIML needs, including the tools you use for storing, retrieving, indexing, and searching, all types of um, things. So like I said, these are all the different data sources on the left, really similar to that slide you saw before, right? So you have some data sources, you have um, that middle part for any storing, querying, analyzing, and then acting on that. So that could be some machine learning services. And I, I would dive deeper into some of these services like Amazon SageMaker that you see on here. But at a high level, this is kind of what that comprehensive end-to-end -end again looks like on AWS. All right, so let's talk about predictive analytics. Um, so predictive analytics is really the, the study of historical and current data to make future predictions. It uses a mixture of advanced mathematical, statistical, and machine learning techniques to really analyze data to, to determine and extrapolate hidden trends. And many businesses and organizations use predictive analytics to really guide future decisions. For example, um, marketing analysts uses predictive analytics to determine future sales for their products, or you know, weather stations use it to forecast weather. Um, so those are just some examples of you know, predictive analytics predicting future trends based off patterns found in historical and current data. And why, why is this important? Because the ability to predict aspects of the future is critical. Um, you know, engineers and scientists, uh, businesses ha have really used predictive analytics to guide their activities. Uh, these include uh, techniques that we still use today, such as regression analysis and decision trees. And the developments in machine learning technology have really allowed data science to expand predictive modeling into areas that were previously too difficult or too complex to handle. And scalable computing, data mining, and deep learning techniques really allow these businesses to dig deeper into their data lakes and extract the information and trends. So predictive analytics has really become embedded into business processes, given organizations that forecast for a significant competitive advantage. 
And lastly, um, I really would just talk about like, uh, like I said, some use cases that you see here. Um, this is just, you know, some of the use cases I already mentioned, maybe there's healthcare, finance, retail, and even manufacturing. Um, and at a high level, how does predictive analysis work? Um, predictive analytics today is really largely based on, like I said, advanced machine learning techniques. So data scientists use deep learning and complex algorithms to really analyze multiple variables to create predictive models able to forecast likely behavior from big data. At a high level, that's really how it works. All right. And we can't really go uh, deeper without really talking about the AIML stack. I think I mentioned Amazon SageMaker before, but I really just want to highlight here how uh, we split our AIML stack within AWS. So the very bottom layer I want to talk here is really that infrastructure. And I think, Ron, you were mentioning before about how you know there, there's uh, different types of chips that we have built out, like our Graviton trip, chips, right? So if you are, if your team has um, you know, data scientists and machine learning experts, and you just want the infrastructure, fine. That's your bottom layer. We will give you that infrastructure. You build your own algorithms, you train and you deploy them on your own. That second layer is where we would call it kind of like a DIY uh, layer. So Amazon SageMaker is our service to help you deploy, build, and fine tune your own machine algorithms. Um, using all different sorts of features in here. So there's Canvas, which I'll go into deeper, um, Studio IDE. So there's many different ways that we help you build and fine tune your own machine learning algorithms. And that's kind of that middle layer there. And then our top layer are our AI services that are already pre-trained, ready to use, very specific use cases that you don't need to fine tune any parameters um, in the background. And one of that, uh, one of those examples I can give is maybe Amazon Textract. Textract is our service to help you extract text from either written documents, hand like handwritten documents or PDFs, and you can extract all of that, right? So that's a very specific AI case. And then on the very top there for AI services, you see generative AI, right? And that's where we have Amazon Bedrock and Amazon Q, which are two of our um, services to help you with if you wanted to uh, leverage some of the foundation models are that are readily available in Amazon Bedrock. So like I said, this is an overall stack of AI ML at AWS from the very top to the very bottom. All right, so SageMaker. This slide, I apologize, is a little busy, but I, I think it's it's broken down into very clear uh, features within Amazon SageMaker. So SageMaker is a service with a lot of different features and capabilities in it. So we typically talk about those capabilities as falling into four categories, data preparation, the model build uh, phase, training and tuning, and then deployment for, or and management, so for hosting. These four categories really address the need that ML builders have when building each stage of these models life cycles. Um, so one of these features that I really wanted to touch base on that is really important for the predictive analytics part is Amazon SageMaker Canvas. So Amazon SageMaker Canvas really makes it easy for you um, to really generate highly accurate ML predictions without having any ML experience. So think of this as no code. You don't need to write any lines of code. It's all click and drop. Uh, it's, all, it's all really a click and drop experience. So with SageMaker Canvas, you can really uh, easily access and import data from the cloud or premises and really quickly combine and cleanse that data via an easy to use interface like I just mentioned. From there, Canvas takes all of the feature engineering model selection, training and optimization, and provides a fully explainable machine learning model using AWS's AutoML innovations. So you can use SageMaker Canvas for a wide range of use cases, like I said, uh, maybe predicting customer churn, uh, predicting on-time deliveries, inventory planning. And then you can either quickly get your predictions in the same UI, so that, makes, uh, so that, that allows you to make decisions quickly, or you can share all the code that Canvas produce to your data scientists for them to inspect and provide feedback. So like I said, Canvas has usage-based pricing, which allows you to pay for only what you use. There's no up upfront costs or fees or licensing involved. The next service I want to highlight is Amazon Forecast. 
Amazon Forecast was designed to help facilitate many of the data scientists, uh, science tasks that traditionally require a lot of time and effort to run and track many experiments. So when training a global time series model, there is a need for all the, the series to be a uniform size, meaning a record needs to be present for every item, for every period in history, you know, <laughs> once the item is seen. So for items that have only like sales once per week, there's a need to have a placeholder for the other six days, right? That is called filling. And Amazon Forecast supports this, allowing you to really specify how to fill in each feature in your target and related time series. So we put the power of Amazon's extensive forecasting experience into the hands of all developers without requiring machine learning expertise. Um, and as shown in this diagram, our customers input their historical demand data into Amazon Forecast. The service then automatically sets up data pipeline, ingests that data, trains a model based on your data, provides accuracy metrics, and generates forecasts. It identifies features, applies this appropriate algorithm for your data, and then automatically tunes the hyperparameters. Forecast will then host your model so that you can easily query what is needed. And in the background, it automatically cleans up the resources that are no longer needed. Hey, Han. Yep. We've got a few minutes left before our next speaker, but I know one of our um, participants, Dominique, I'm going to ask you to ask your question, Dominique, before we finish up in a little bit, just to keep things on time about um, AI Solution Explorer. Dominic, can you ask your question? Yeah, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah, hey, Han, there was a slide you had early on, you were showing the uh, a search box for uh, AI solutions. Yep. Is that, is that a public link or? Yeah, that is a public link and I will get you these slides after this presentation or I can just put it into the chat after I'm done here. Okay, yeah, I was just what curious is, what the URL was. Great, right, why don't you, you put it in the chat and just rem remember, yep. I'll make sure all the slides and the videos are all available for downloading. Um, okay, we've got a couple more minutes on, so I'll, let yep. me turn it back to you. This is my last slide here. Um, so next steps, really. So I wasn't really able to dive deep into any reference architectures or s tell you exactly how you will build use Sam, uh, Amazon Sage Member Canvas or Forecast in your infrastructure today. So with that being said, we can definitely have a deeper discussion to talk about uh, maybe like a discovery workshop to see how your current infrastructure is today or what your workloads or what your use cases are and how some of these uh, services I mentioned could fit in. There's also lots of training that you can get on AWS if you go to aws.training. And lastly, I would really encourage you all to think of maybe a low hanging fruit, right? Uh, a proof of concept, some sort of use case. I think Dominic, you brought, you brought this up. So a, a great use case that you can maybe go for a proof of concept for. Um, that's, that's really all I challenge you all with. And with that, that's all I have. Thank you all so much for your time um, and back to you.